Shut up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello, good morning, and welcome to the warm-up match of the show matches today. It has been almost a month and a half since we've had a Money Speaks show match for you, but we are back in action, and, uh, well, we've brought you a warm-up match. The first one, of course, also a TVZ, spawning here in the bottom right corner of the map, playing for Carnage Esports. It is, of course, the Red Zerg player, Namshar, who will also be coming to cast with me later, so hopefully he wins so he can say good things. Otherwise, he'll lose and we'll complain. <laughs> His opponent at the top left, though, teammate, also recently starred in Who's the Best European. Give it up for the Blue Terran player, also from Carnage Esports, in Zane. It's a bit of a shit talk between friends currently going on, as we can see. Let me just move some stuff over here. And move that out of the way. Alright, and we are on Team Liquid, which is good. I wasn't actually sure if I had listed myself or not, but. Howdy. Anyways, uh, we got a couple other casters joining us here on the stream. Of course, uh, they're both casting for Cascade. So, that's going to be the team of Koss. Uh, he requested his t his uh, team streamers come in. I said, sure, why not? You're playing a show match. Love to have them. So, uh, if you guys get sick of my stream, you can always check out theirs. But, uh, we got bets open right now. Of course, they've been closed at this point. Uh, let's see here. What is the final tally? Yikes! Okay, we got a lot of Namshire fans here. Hopefully he doesn't disappoint because uh, we got almost 11,000 partoofs on Namshar and uh, just shy of 2k on Inten- or sorry, Inzane. Whose name I apparently misspelled by the way on the uh, bet list. Oops. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Inzane is going for what appears to be just a standard opener. Nothing insane out of him. <laughs> uh, I mean the gases weren't super early. It doesn't have the rushed out factory. Uh, he is going to get that Reaper as expected. Maybe that's if he can sneak in the uh, healing hot bunker that we've seen in the past, but Namshar is also taking gas, so his uh, his speedlings will not, uh, his speed timing won't be super duper late. Thus, uh, he'll be able to deal with the Reaper, but let's we'll see if Insane can get some damage done. I kind of feel like long gone, how are the times where the Reapers are meant to do a lot of damage though. Like, if you can get some damage in, that's fantastic. Uh, and the best player certainly still can, but the Reaper is more... I guess good for uh, scouting than anything else. <laughs> T-Rex, you. Uh, he says this because he sees the really late um, full timing with the gas and all that. Uh, if you go hatch first, I mean that that alone is like the tempted sexy T-Rex and all that. But uh, for Nam sure, he'll be, uh, he'd be in that much trouble. Actually, it's interesting. Some players have two very different opinions on uh, how to T-Rex. One is like actually keep your hatch ready, the other is to let it fall. Uh, what is kind of interesting is Namshar has expressed several times on stream about how to hold a T-Rex and we've discussed the way Snoot does amongst other players because Snoot does it very uniquely different than most but I am curious if he did get T-Rex how that would go. Anyways, Lynx is trying to chill back on Creep for the time being. Uh, he does have the Queen out so this really doesn't need to be that much damage. Yeah, the Reaper's just going to back away. Uh, second Reaper will be joining up in a moment. You'll note he did not make a third. So it does make it a little bit awkward for the home defense. I'm sure perhaps could have snuck out a couple lanes to go for that uh, SCV kill and delay the CC, but... A bit of a nuisance, but nothing he should really take too much from. You can lose a Queen and Reapers if you're not careful. It's really scary when that happens. Uh, back at home, you know, he's going for the Hellions. He's got a third CC on the way instead of rushing that starport. Never took that second gas. The Banshees aren't even a second thought in his mind right now. I mean, Insane's just open up with a really nice standard, hey, I want to get to the late game. Hey, maybe I'll play that mid game sort of uh, scenario. And the wall comes actually down pretty late. This is actually kind of scary. Like, Inzane's kind of joking about what he's seen out of Namshar. And he says, like, oh, I should have two racks you or I'm going to two racks you next. But it's worth noting, what Namshar sees is a really late wall. And uh, I shouldn't say really late wall. Six minutes, seven minutes. Like, this is where you can, like, throw all, all of your minerals into a wall if you want. But this is, like, the perfect scenario for, to have opened with the roach buffs. To have gone for some sort of roach bailing all in, perhaps. Uh, ooh. Hey, who are those guys? <laughs> it's us. <laughs> Uh, oh, this would be kind of funny. Actually, this is totally worth turning the other streams on if you haven't already. Um, go get them up in the background while I explain this, but we got first blood built into the game for observers. I don't believe these other guys know that because I think it's their first time casting with us, much less on this extension mod. So 
I would, I, they'll probably have some funny reactions like, what the fuck was that? When something finally dies here in a second, when Elliot's on the front line, something's sure to eventually die here. Need to get Blast with you off. Uh, Queens are going to back away from this. Of course, there's three of them, four of them. Uh, no transfuse is really readily available, but... Uh, he's getting some pressure on the hatchery. Can't really ignore this. Meanwhile, Link's coming across the map. There's but one Hellion and a couple Marines to hold. So, uh, my first place. Uh, hmm. I have to go look up their bots and see how they react. I know Emil, Polish cast, the first time he saw the first blood uh, in game, he was just like, he messaged me on Skype immediately. He's like, what was that? I just had a heart attack. Uh, so it's not really that scary, but I just, I guess, unexpected for those who uh, don't know to expect it. A little bit bold to uh, drone up this base with the impending Hellion to the side, but I guess he's uh, not, not at all scared of Insane pushing in. Uh, they are teammates, I'm sure they practice and talk and they know each other's subtle tactics like how to handle a third and stuff. Um, I guess this is where we're on a bit of downtime. Uh, Inzane's kind of a cool dude. Uh, he used to be shout out to the boss because, of course, one of the things for him was he qualified for that big, uh, who's the best of your team. He didn't get the invite because he was like a teammate in Namshar and he was nice the queen. Uh, he was actually just straight up qualified, uh, through one of the qualifiers. So he's a pretty talented dude. Sadly, didn't make it too far in the big tournament. We'll see how he does in the show match today. Uh, it is, for those just tuning in, a best of three between these two. Uh, the main show following this will be a best of seven, of course. As the cruiser down, I'm sure not highly aggressive, but it is on the way, which is nice. It's gonna take his fourth out here. Uh, he's got all his gas and stuff. Really waiting to see what his next tech path's gonna be. I mean, he's sitting on just lings right now. This is so. I feel stupid. I mean, if Insane just went for like a Hellbat push, <laughs> like no Marauders, like Hellbat's four or five Marines behind it. Like Jesus, I gotta feel like he would have. Uh, the slaughtered Namshire at this point, because Namshire's gonna have like a small amount of queens and some circles out, but I guess uh, Bailing Speed now on the way, he's gonna have Bailing's out potentially if he sees this getting too hairy. He's gonna get the Mutalist out, so play the standard style of this matchup. One of the things about uh, this style though, and you'll hear a lot of circles talk about this, is how the Mutas have really fallen out of favor. Thor's become way better with that AI change. Uh, it's not really noticeable just how much they contribute to the fight until they had made that change. And now it's to the point where Mutalists aren't even getting past like the double digits. <laughs> You'll see 9 to 10 out, usually maybe 15, and sometimes stops around there. There are still some Zerg players who insist on playing heavy with the uh, Mutas, who still will go for that 20-30 count, and it can work! It can! But that's kind of the emphasis, it's no longer like that's the go-to strategy, but more like a strategy that can and will work. Chipping away the rocks in the back, though one of the nice things about Lings is they're going to be a lot more mobile than anything else he has available. So, heading on Roach Hydra, or that weird swarm host style we're seeing on the players like Snoot and such, then it would have been a much more static game. And I, I from what we've seen out of Namshire in the past, from the few games we've cast of him and cast with him, uh, mobility always seems to be one of the key points in this matchup. But I know he's not the map, he's got a little bit of a tussle going down, so Bailey's going to trade out into the Marines. He's got a lot of Bailey's left, though. He could easily take out those Wood I feel, uh, had he had kept pushing. The screens are right there, but uh, Insane certainly doesn't have enough to keep pushing into the creep. Best case scenario, maybe clears up some of the creep. Our uh, concern now lays in the fact that with the Mutus coming out, there's going to be that third dimension, the extra element of the game. Where Insane's got a couple of out, and that's wonderful, this can easily be picked up by the Mutus if caught unprotected. Of course, for Namshire as well, he can use the Mutus to perhaps harass the natural. One, one missile turret, mass repaired. Okay, maybe he can't do it so well. Yo, it made like a giant C. I feel like his name's Christopher, so maybe... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, his double drops coming to the main, and he is out of position for this. In the middle of the map, looking at Tusk with these Widow Mines. Not at all thinking about what's coming towards his main. So pulls the drones off this, and there's a couple of links running towards the back, but a little bit... Uh, pointlessly as they just die. Extractor does go down, focus on the spawning pool next. Not a bad choice considering Zerkins and Bailey is going to be the bulk of his army. Uh, to stand his ground and fight, probably his best option. I think he knows he's just going to die if he just picked up the left anyway, so takes out a couple of links with him. Nice snipe though on the spawning pool. That was actually a great, a great catch. For someone playing so Zerkins and Bailey heavy, uh, it's going to really put a big stint on the production, but sadly for Zane, you know, he's not at that point where he's producing like 13 Marines at a time. You know, three widow mines out of two factories type thing. He's uh, not really got the pushing power to take advantage of this. So while that was a nice snipe, I don't think we're going to really get to see much come of it. Not yet at least. 
can't go down now. Clumped up with these Marines. Oh god. Be careful, please. Poor, poor Marines. I could have gotten a little bit worse there, I guess. I had those bandits connected any differently. I'm clearing up some of the creep. Not a total waste of time. However, still a little bit scared to push on with a creep and break for so. Knocks down the rocks at the last second, doesn't kill anything with them, but does uh, close off one of the avenues of attack. Ooh! Ooh! Amsure, why? Oh god! Let's help us beat us to the Marines. Gets nothing for it. Awkward. But he pulls back. He's on 82 drones, four bases. He's kind of. I'd say in a comfortable spot, to say the least. Zane's not really putting in a lot of pressure, and this is kind of scary because this is an amateur. There we go. The station put on the way. Able to afford his way to 3-3. Uh, to afford his way to a high. Takes out all of the Marines almost. A couple of bad connections with Bailey's, but in the end, he had enough that he wipes everything. Uh, the question is, are there enough units left over to take out what there is left? There's still four. He's got to chew through. Folks in the medevacs actually instead. Not a bad choice. These are very expensive units. And uh, Mutalist will actually. Ooh, maybe could you pull medevac? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh, damn sure. Uh, the Ling's flooding in there are actually working out fantastically here because moving forward, not good against a lot of Ling's in. Right now, Zane is just being overrun. Amshar, well, he's actually running out of bailing juice at this point. Freddy Fire goes off on the Marines without one of mine, but he's kept a lot of the Mutalists alive. He did lose 16 over the course of the game, but as we see more in production and more to replace this. Uh, Queens? What are you, why are you, what? Uh, okay, hi. Awkward. Uh, in the meantime, we got a sub. Sorry, I, I missed that. We had a bit of a fight going on. That's issue really rad. Uh, Eric my Eric my Eric me. However, I pronounce your name. Welcome to the family here. You are now a base tradian. And, uh, you've actually triggered uh, an awesome season giveaway for later on in the cast. So, now we've got, like, quadruple giveaways for today's show match series. Where we are really spoiling you guys' viewers. I hope you guys can uh, enjoy it. Anyways, they get swamped once again. We don't have any like side drops going off to this. This is just one consolidated force. And uh, Namshar actually, with a couple bailing hits, might be able to break this. There are what am I to look out for? He knows this as well. Ooh, rock blocks! <laughs> Never thought I'd be able to say that with proper context, but you know, what ifs? Uh, this fifth base over here is trying to get saturated while this is going on. I think it's saying now is fully aware that that's up. He didn't scout it before, but when you see Zerglings flooding it from the right, you got a bit of a clue. He's not going to scout it, though. His troops get absolutely wiped in the middle of the map. A Baneling club still possibly getting hit by these little mines. Uh, it's a little bit scary. Hits going off of Zerglings, hits going off of Mutalisks, but does Namshire have enough? Looks like no. I'm going to have to disengage once again. Inzane uh, is... Kind of just, I feel this really awkward. Like, he's in a situation where he's on the cusp of having the production to beat Namshire to death. You know, uh, Namshire is opting to go for swarm host here. Are you for cereal? Did I make myself a referee? Can I shit talk him? No, I can't. Uh, okay, so he's gonna try and go for like the swarm host ad adept styles of this. I want to explain this real quick because we've seen some players try and do this and it just doesn't work for them. Ah, uh, nice muta control here, by the way. I think mutas are way better than swarm hosts uh, are ever gonna be. This is just control. But. At any rate, we saw Scarlet, for example, at IEM. She kind of YOLO went Swarm Hosts, and it did not work. It was just, it was horrible. Not to watch because it was, like, so bad, but it just didn't work because it wasn't well practiced. Uh, admittedly, so I learned backstage that she just, she didn't know what to do. So she was like, all right, I'll try Swarm Hosts type thing. But Namshar, I'm hoping, is a little more practiced with this. Uh, the way this is going to work is, like, it can overwhelm. But one of the biggest things Swarm Hosts force you to do is change your play style. You can't just keep going Marines. Uh, you can eventually try and brute force your way through, but between bailings of free units like Swarmos, you'll eventually just get uh, like, just choked to death through the freeness of it all. Uh, setting up four bases is okay, and Sane's got a lot of money to go from, go through, get choked by, but... Uh, the other thing the Swarmos do really fantastically is they eat the Widow Mines. A lot of people forget this when it comes to consideration, but if the Widow Mines are all in cooldown because they've gone off on useless units like Locusts, then the bailings can roll in very comfortably and un unopposed. Uh, the music is still looking pretty good at 23. Uh, we'll see if the swarm is made. I like that he didn't overinvest. We got about what 10 in play. He's got range weapon upgrades starting right now too. On his way to Hive, Namshire can still go for that like ultra tech if he wants to. But having not made like 40 swarm hosts, he actually has gas and minerals in the bank right now. He's also maxed out, but that's all another can of worms. All right, so. 
as we see trading out a couple marauders, a couple marines. Stim goes down. These brutal mines have got to get some sick hits. No, they go off with the links, not the bane links. The Mewis are too clumped for these swords. He splits at the last second, but he will be able to break this front from Inzane. However, what he has is a planetary fortress behind it. Inzane's actually going to be able to hold this really nicely, even against the Locust uh, to an extent. Planetary fortress, if he can, and the Slash Engine has just a little too hard to break without like one big bust of an attack, without big units like Ultra Lisks. As you see, what am I going off on top of the swarm host, or sorry, on top of the locusts, a little bit uselessly here. And Inzane just doesn't have a large number of units. Uh, we got a Juno Glance coming out now as we make this lane even better. 3 3 finally on the way, despite that high of, uh, I think it could have reported it out a little bit sooner, but man, these splash damage from Flanagan Fortress have not gone. Already up to like 9 kills off that first wave, not too bad. However, Mutas flock into the natural with this going on, and well, Inzane actually doesn't have any cores here. He's investing in tanks, and rightfully so, because he sees the locusts, but. I kind of feel like everything he has is just getting, uh, beat down. <laughs> One of the scariest things for Namshar, or sorry, for Insane as well, is Namshar has yet to get Blinding Clouds out for anything. Like, right now, everything is needless, Lurklings, a couple of Swarm Hosts, and a lot of Balings. But the second that he makes start, uh, you know, those tanks to counter the Swarm Hosts to counter the Locusts, that's when Blinding Clouds come out. That's when the Ducks go off, that's when Nub. Blinding Clouds come down and just shut these out of the way. Three tanks at a time, kind of embedding some mech into this. A good way to play this style, play against it even. How about this Banelings flood in? It's my big fortress. Oh, it's still gonna go down. There's just too many Banelings. All these SCD stuff clumped up to try to repair. They have sure getting a million jillion kills. Well, more like 21, but still. Oh, that's gonna really sting because Zane was really relying on that base for income. Right now, three mineral patches in his natural. Everything here at the third. Oh, he's mining out in a good moment's time. And of course, one mineral patch in their main for about nine workers. Uh, the definition of oversaturation. The swarm hosts are in a good position, too, to keep this base from ever being rebuilt or ever taken back comfortably. And uh, as far as what goes, I mean, let's take a look at the units lost again. I mean, it's just both sides racking up those numbers. But uh, I'm sure Zergling is going to be better than ever. The Mutalisk is going to have level 3 weapon upgrades. Insane. Ah, the tanks were such a smart move, but it just wasn't uh, wasn't enough soon enough. And I kind of feel like even with three tanks coming out at a time, I don't know if they'll have enough to deal with this properly. Because uh, the more he invests in tanks and marauders, the less he invests in marines and thors, which means those mutalisks become even more scary. It's this constant battle for tech, who's swapping to what? And I think Namshur's just had the, uh, had the edge every step of the way so far. So Swarmo's going to be rally for a couple of them are going to get picked off through the Marauders in the front lines. Uh, Bailey's a little bit tentative to engage, realizing just how many sea chains there are there. Uh, and Zane, though, uh, he just doesn't have a lot of anti-air. This is so scary. There's seriously a, a small handful of Marines. I really, truly feel the Beatles could just dive in if they wanted to. Either go for the production or go for the third. I don't know which, but one of the two. Yeah, he was picking up tanks and Marauders as predicted. Ah, uh, this is the problem. Insane, uh, I think, tunnel visioned a little too hard on the swarm host and forgot about the original, the original units, the Bailings and the Mutalisks. Man, I'm sure, by the way, I love that he's not throwing these away. He knew there was going to be more uh, Marines he had to deal with, so rather than throw them into a supply depot or a couple of bunkers, or even the SCVs, he keeps the Bailings alive to go for the Marines afterwards. 24 Marines coming out, too. Uh, with the Drill on the Lens and 3-3, especially, these are going to be super deadly. If nothing else, they're going to be able to chew through buildings like nobody's business, much less get the top of the siege tanks to the top of the Marines. I gotta, I gotta give it to Namjir though. Like of all the things he's done this game, I don't even really care that he went for the swarm host style. I'm loving his Banelings. Um, combination of the way he's been able to just throw them in, his control, not running on the top of siege fireball until I like, start complimenting him. Does. But uh, either way, the uh, the Banelings have been excellent this game. Do a little swap and realize there's no hint I hear whatsoever. Trips come down, but a little too late. No Thor's to see whatsoever. One missile turret goes down here in the mineral lines. SCV's now in evacuation. And uh, Swarm Host coming in for round two. Only three tanks remain. They're going to siege up for this, but uh, Marines going to bleed out. Marauders will die the front lines. Beetle is just back up and disengage for the time being. Good decision making here out of Namchar. Uh, in the meantime, for Zane, like, like I said, like he made the right response to this, but I kind of feel like he's just on this map, it's it's struggling too much to keep up with Namchar's mobility. Uh, so if I think this was a map like Deadwing, same situation, same units and everything, I kind of feel like Namshar actually doesn't do this so easily, but he's able to abuse King Sejong so nicely, uh, just because of the positioning more than anything else. 
units are actually going to go to the base over here on the turret. I'm not sure what that was about. It's a little bit awkward in that regard. A couple of free medevacs. Just boost away. Zane's still dancing between bases, trying to keep the tabs on Namshar. Oh, not easy to do. Not easy to do. Still, though, uh, wrapping around the third base, and this already picked off. Siege tanks are just annihilating the mainland. Oh my god, Namshar just threw so many away for absolutely nothing. Oh god. Kids, we just learned why you don't run Bailings into tank fire. Oh, that was so painful. Oh, these Swarmos gonna get. They got got! Uh, he catches them here in the middle of the map. They're trying to retreat them. Bailings might have to cover. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot of them to cover, though. So, a nice trade out of Namcher at the end of the day. Uh, and what otherwise should have been like him losing all of his Swarmos. But then Zane getting that push off. And Zane starting to push forward here with a bio with so many freaking tanks. You know, I said it might have been too late, but I think I was wrong because with 12 tanks, he's able to chase these Swarmos. If Namcher burrows them, he's gonna lose them. Like if he burrows them to arm them, the, the, the Marines will just stay on top of this. As you see, if we get off one, uh, it doesn't quite get a chance to completely disengage. Has to be careful though. Oh, these things are so precious and so critical, but he doesn't have a lot of anti-air. So once again, the Mutals are starting to truck through this. The Medivacs are completely out of juice. The Marines are dying. He's going to trade out all of his tanks and Marauders for the Swarmos. But do understand he's going to lose all of his tanks and all of his Marauders. I love it more Mutals being built right now. Namshar, he was leading the tech swap game. I think uh, Zane was kind of cut on to what's up. As soon as the Swarm has died, I don't know if you'd expect an answer to make more, but we got Ultralisks on the way. Some more Marauders at least could be necessary, but these Mutalisks, all oh, these Mutalisks will not be stopped. Level 3 weapon upgrades allow them to engage on top of Marines. Insane losing so many Medivacs. I mean, 29 Medivacs! This level is three, like 30. Oh my god, that's so many Medivacs. Got, I put in the wings almost 30. Nice cover. Shut up. Point is. With so many medevacs dead, he's got none to heal this army, so the Stim Marines can't deal with the Mutalis like they normally could. Picks up a couple things, but just dies there in the uh, the medevac, and Inzane looked like he was going to turn this around for a moment. He really, truly did. Mules like crazy, the fourth aren't even going to save him at this point. He's got no production. Zerglas and top what few OCVs there are, and I think is about to lock down this game. This was a really, really freaking well-fought game out of Inzane, and he showed us a way to sort of deal with that swarm host style. But GG is going to be called a Namshar. He takes game number one. Whoop, whoop. All right. Game number one goes to Namshar. Uh, what was map two? Nimbus.